Welcome to the tutorial on performing production data entry within the Oracle Clinical application. In our previous sessions, we discussed the process of creating a data entry screen using the global library subsystem where we created DBGs, questions and question groups. We then created DCMs and DCIs in the definition subsystem. In the DCMs, when we created them, we associated question groups to them. And when we created DCIs, we associated DCMs to the DCIs. Finally, we created and tested validation procedures, which are programs used to identify inconsistent data. And we activated our DCMs, DCIs, and validation procedures. This is what we did in our previous sessions with respect to the creation of data entry screens. Now going forward, now that we have activated DCMs and DCIs, now our data entry screens that we have designed are in a production mode which means they can be used by the data entry team to perform data entry using completed case report forms that are being received from the investigative side. So we'll take an example of a completed case report form when received from an investigative site and take it through the data entry process with an Oracle Clinical to understand how the data entry happens with an Oracle Clinical. So for this, I have uh, two documents. One is a completed physical examination case report form. This is the same form that we have designed. And now we're going to use this form, uh, which is a completed form sent by the investigator to perform data entry for it. A general look at this form will uh, will uh, will make uh, make us uh, make it clear that uh, the examination date on this form or visit date is actually blank. There are some other errors that you may notice uh, on this form. For example, the blood pressure. It's uh, it's confounding whether it's actually 170 or 120. It's unclear, right? You may also encounter scenarios within a form where the response to a question was asked, but there are corrections to it. For example, the response to the body system is marked as normal, but there's also an abnormal which has been marked and then crossed out by the investigator. But the investigator has not signed and dated this correction. So these kind of errors may also be encountered. You may also encounter situations which are uh, multiple responses. For example, if you look at chest, uh, where the response was expected as either normal, or abnormal or not examined, the, invest the, the, data in the investigator has actually answered two of them. He's answered normal as well and uh, not examined as well, whereas only one answer was expected. So like that, you can have various scenarios within the form which could be erroneous or discrepant. And we'll talk about how you can handle these erroneous scenarios. So when, da when data entry, before data entry is actually started with an Oracle Clinical, the data management team will prepare a document known as data entry guidelines. Data entry guidelines are actually documents that are prepared to ensure that everyone in the data entry team performs the entry of the data in the same manner. For example, if the examination date is missing, one data entry operator may enter today's date for it, or some one data entry operator may enter not applicable for it. Another data entry operator may enter, uh, he may enter the year as 2020, but he may not enter the date and month. So, Instead of the data entry operators making assumptions as to what the data has to be entered for a particular field, if it's not provided or if it's erroneous, uh, you lay down a certain set of guidelines at a data management level. You lay down a certain set of guidelines to say, this is what you need to follow if you encounter erroneous data. This is an, this is an example of a, such a guideline. It tells what needs to be done in which scenario. For example, if, if they encounter that the entire CRF, which is the entire DCM or DCI is blank, then what do they need to do with it? If there are any extra comments on the form, how do they need to tackle it? If any of the DCM dates and times are not provided, then how do they need to deal with it? For example, in this case, the, the date of the examination is not provided, right? So here, the DCI date, which is the date of examination, is not provided. So it says if a visit date is a futuristic date, or if the visit date is blank, then enter the current date and raise an operator comment. So it's telling that the data entry operators, who all of which will be referring to this data entry guideline, it's telling them that if you find 
CI date or a visit date to be blank, then in that case, uh, you can just enter uh, the current date. So in that case, they would just enter the current date over here, all right, which is today's date. So that's how uh, that's how you would need to um, uh, that's how you would need to refer to the data entry guidelines as data entry operators and why the data entry guidelines are important. Now let's get to the point of how we perform data entry on an actual case report form. So typically there will be three set of personnel performing data entry. One personnel will be known as uh, the lead data entry operators. The lead data entry operator's responsibility will be to enter the header information of the case report form within the Oracle Clinical application. So before I get to that, let me come back to Oracle Clinical and explain to you what, where do you perform data entry and what are the various sub-modules of data entry. So production data entry within Oracle Clinical is performed using the data entry subsystem. Click on the data entry subsystem to expand it. There are various modules within the data entry subsystem. I'm going to cover each one of them to show you how the data entry is performed and how they are used. But uh, two of them I've already covered in our previous sessions on testing data entry, where I told you about initial login and first pass. Initial login is the process of entering the header information of the case report form uh, into uh, the Oracle Clinical application. So this information, which includes the subject ID, the visit ID, and the visit date, this is header information, which is pre-built within the uh, pre-built within Oracle Clinical, and this needs to be entered uh, into the form first. Unless you enter this header information in the initial login field, you will not be able to perform the entry of the rest of the form. So this process of entering header information from a completed case report form into the Oracle Clinical application is called initial login. And initial login is done by the lead data entry associate. So the lead data entry associate, whenever they receive this form, they are going to look at this form.